Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Bravo News. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Ari Shoei alum Kim Zolciak and her estranged husband, Croy Bierman, have filed a restraining order against the bank. They are struggling to keep their Georgia mansion in their possession just a little while longer, but it has not been easy. So the former couple has taken drastic measures. Keep reading for all of the details as to what they are doing and how the RO could help. Kim Zolciak has been able to dodge foreclosure on her Georgia mansion twice already. The first time was in 2022, and the home was miraculously saved. Yet, in early 2023, she and her husband, Croy Bierman, were about to face foreclosure again. Plus, their home was getting ready to go to auction, but the whole family denied any problems with the home. At the same time, Kim owed over $1 million to the IRS. Soon after, she and Croy filed for divorce, reconciled, and filed once again. Corda wanted to sell the home because it was too much of a financial burden. The home faced foreclosure once again, but the duo was able to work out an arrangement with the bank. They had until January 2024 to sell it and have since slashed the selling price a few times. Now it looks like time has run out, so Kim and Croy have taken drastic measures. According to Radar Online, they have requested a temporary restraining order to prevent the bank from taking their home to auction. Their home was put up for $6 million and is now down to $4.5 million upon failure to sell. The goal for Kim Zolciak was that selling this mansion would allow the RHOA alum to pay off her exceedingly high debts. Truist Bank had mostly left the couple alone since they had been trying to sell their home until last month. That was when the bank shared that they wanted to move ahead with foreclosure. A non-judicial foreclosure was scheduled for May 3rd or after, but Kim and Croy have attempted to halt that. Kim Zolciak and Croy Bierman are really trying their best to save the home from foreclosure. In the motion, they wrote this. The marital home located in Alpharetta, Georgia has been listed for sale. The property has been shown and negotiations over the terms of sale have commenced with several prospective buyers. Petitioners also seek a temporary injunction prohibiting respondent from initiating foreclosure proceedings until the matter is heard and decided. As of now, nothing has been set. The couple has lost a lot in the process. Croy lost one of his prized cars while their eldest daughter, Briel Bierman's Range Rover, was repossessed. Finally, Ariana Bierman is shocked by Kim's behavior as she has been consistently posting clickbait about the family for cash. However, Kim does not warn Ariana first, so she is mortified when she sees what has been shared. It will be interesting to see if they can beat foreclosure again. Are you surprised that Kim and Croy have not been foreclosed on yet? Let us know in the comments below. In the bustling metropolis of Atlanta, where Southern charm mingled with urban flair, Kim Zolciak, a prominent figure in the realm of reality television, found herself embroiled in a legal saga of epic proportions. It all began when Kim, known for her larger-than-like persona on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, made headlines for an unprecedented move, filing a restraining order against none other than a bank. The news sent shockwaves through Atlanta's elite circles, leaving tongues wagging and eyebrows raised in disbelief. How could a reality star of Kim's stature find herself at odds with a financial institution? As rumors swirled and speculation ran rampant, the truth behind Kim's legal battle slowly began to unravel. It all stemmed from a seemingly innocuous transaction. A mortgage agreement signed years prior, when Kim and her husband, Croy Bierman, sought to purchase their sprawling Atlanta mansion. What was meant to be a straightforward arrangement soon evolved into a nightmare of bureaucratic red tape and financial woes. As Kim delved deeper into the intricacies of their mortgage, she uncovered a web of deceit and malfeasance perpetrated by the bank. Hidden fees, exorbitant interest rates, and predatory lending practices painted a damning portrait of corporate greed run amok. Fueled by righteous indignation, Kim resolved to take a stand against the injustice she and her family had endured. With the support of her legal team, Kim embarked on a David and Goliath battle against the banking behemoth, armed with nothing but her unwavering resolve and a steadfast commitment to seek justice. The restraining order she filed was not merely a symbolic gesture, it was a bold declaration of defiance, a proverbial line drawn in the sand against the forces of corporate tyranny. As the legal proceedings unfolded, Kim found herself thrust into the spotlight once more, this time as a champion for the disenfranchised and downtrodden. Her social media platforms became rallying points for legions of fans and supporters, who rallied behind her cause with unwavering fervor. Yet, amidst the fervent support, Kim faced her fair share of challenges and setbacks. The bank, with its deep pockets and army of high-powered attorneys, waged a relentless campaign to discredit her claims and undermine her credibility. False accusations and smear campaigns threatened to derail Kim's quest for justice, but she refused to back down, standing firm in her convictions despite the mounting pressure. 
As the courtroom drama reached its climax, tensions ran high as both sides presented their final arguments. For Kim, it was more than just a legal battle, it was a fight for dignity, integrity, and the fundamental rights of every hard-working individual who had been wronged by the system. In the end, justice prevailed as the court ruled in Kim's favor, delivering a resounding victory for the underdog against corporate greed. The restraining order against the bank served as a precedent-setting landmark in the fight against predatory lending practices, sending shockwaves through the financial industry, and igniting a nationwide conversation about consumer rights and accountability. For Kim Zolciak, the battle may have been won, but the war against injustice raged on. As she returned to the spotlight, her resolve stronger than ever, Kim vowed to continue fighting for those who had been silenced and marginalized, a beacon of hope in a world too often consumed by darkness.